Morning guys. Well, we got some errands to run this morning and today's moving day for us. So that's going to be a party. It's nice and humid already. Eight o'clock in the morning and it's already steamy. So that's what's on tap for today. So when we get back to doing our errands today, we're going to show you just how we hook this monster up and get out of here. Okay guys, RV tip of the day. Something the full-time RVers who are not hooked up to full hookup should do. Especially if you want to let your wife go first taking a shower. Check the water before you get in. Get all soaked up. Soap in your face. Soap in your eyes. Soap in your nether regions. Because then they have to bring cold water into you. Even on a hot day, some cold water is just too cold. So, keep that in mind. Check your water. That's all. Hey, Miss Jill thinks that moving days will require alcohol. Right early, we're already here looking at alcohol. She may have a problem. <laughs> you realize it's very early in the morning, right? It's never too early. All right, so we're back from the store. All that good stuff, running a few errands. We had to go pick up some medicine and uh, a few groceries. That way we didn't have to do it later when we get to where we're going. So we've done that. It's now back here at the campsite. I'm going to uh, start cleaning up camp, of course. Clean up all the stuff out here. But we're going to do the whole thing of walking around the rig and doing the inspection on the rig. So when I start inspecting the rig before we get ready to leave, first thing I do is I come around here and I look at my pigtail. This is what supplies your electric to your camper. I look make sure it doesn't have any fraying or anything like that on here. You know, where it's been rubbing or anything i make sure that uh my emergency brake thing here in case you lose your trailer make sure all that stuff's still in here so it's not making contact that way it's not holding your brakes up on you burn your brakes out and i got a supervisor here mr diesel he's chasing around seeing what i'm doing so then just kind of come around look around check out the slide see if there's anything impeding the slides at the moment Make sure my bays are closed. All this stuff. This is before you start hooking up. Look around, make sure there's nothing hanging off up top. Anything under there? No. Look up top there. Now we'll do this again once we pull the slide back in. But I'm just going to get down here and kind of do a visual of the rims and tires here look if I see anything you know sticking right out that would uh, cause alarm at the moment so far nothing is like sticking out it looks like it needs any immediate attention but once we pull the slides in we'll double check people would turn off their propane and everything like that but since we're full-time RVers we have a refrigerator full of food so we're not gonna turn our propane or anything off because uh, we want to keep our groceries cold so that's one step if you're not planning on, you know, having your refrigerator running. If you're just a weekend camper, it'd be fine to go ahead and turn everything off. As long as you don't have anything in the refrigerator, it's going to go bad. So, in addition to checking the camper over, just kind of come and do a once over of my tires on the tow rig. Make sure nothing looks like it's under inflated, which I will pull out the air pressure gauge and check, make sure all the tires are properly aired up. good to do anytime you do a pre-trip on your vehicles before you take off just kind of look around make sure there's nothing awry sticking out anywhere and the key thing to hooking up a fifth wheel <laughs> make sure you drop that tailgate that way you don't take the tailgate smash into this guy here make a big mess here and possibly tear it up here as you know, that's never a good thing. Everybody's got a job to do, and right now Jill's job is to kill the spiders. <laughs> how you feel about that? She's <laughs> so in addition, remember how I was talking about in a previous video that we don't have slide toppers? Somebody has to go out there and physically look and see. And that job belongs to Miss Jill today. Oh, we're good. She said we're good, though. We ain't got nothing up there. But she's still going to go up and check anyway. Make sure there's nothing else up there that's going to cause a problem. 
And you also, that's a good time to look and see if you need to reapply any adhesive up there to make sure you're not going to get nice leaks inside your RV. What are you looking like up there, miss? This corner needs touch needs, up. We need to touch up on that corner? Okay. So that means we are out of sealant, so we'll have to get some more sealant today and take care of that also. It's a never-ending battle when you're full-time. So moving day is always kind of like moving in your stick and brick when you're moving to another place. But if you've been somewhere for a little while, you got things out, and Miss Jill likes to do all the dishes, get all that stuff done before we move. So we got that crazy scenario going on here. And then also, with ours, since we have the slide and we have two chairs, we have to move those out over to the other side here instead of usually have one chair sitting in this corner and one over here in this corner we have to also strap our electronics in our tv uh miss jill's fireplace but usually we just stick that in and brace it with some pillows keep things uh from bouncing around and cracking the glass then we also move miss jill's office to the couch so we got monitors and everything underneath these pillows here. Keeps them from bouncing around, tearing those up. So, yeah, moving day, you kind of disassemble your camper inside, trying to get everything ready to go. Miss Jill, come up with a little ingenious way to... Store the dog food. Tell them why you decided to do that. So it doesn't spill. Exactly. <laughs> but, you know... Good way not to just stick the plastic into a landfill. Right. It's, Get to reuse it. It's Let's, from a restaurant where we had leftovers or something. I don't know. But, um, Mr. Dog, he doesn't seem to mind that. But he's like, uh, lady, what are you doing with my bowl? That's my kibble. Um, we would excuse do it me. with his water, too. But he doesn't like water out of a plastic bowl. So he, we have to put it in the... Yeah, he, he's a picky dog. He's got to have the you know nice stainless bowls for his water. And he's, you know, real persnickety that way. He's got one outside, too. So he's a pampered puppy doggy. thing to remember when hooking up a fifth wheel. Never have your king bo kingpin box higher than your fifth wheel. You want it to be right here at this angle here. That way the bump plate on the king box will slide up over top of the fifth wheel plate inside of your truck. That way you make a proper and secure connection. And we're going to have our lovely assistant, Miss Jill, back the truck up and do the coupling process. Bingo, bingo. All hooked. Sure that you do have proper connection. You want to go in behind and make sure those jaws lock around that kingpin, like so. One other key thing to remember when hooking up your fifth wheel. You want to take your emergency brake away. And you want to make sure that's hooked to your pin. And you put this safety pin in here. It's kind of hard to do with one hand, but you get the gist of it. Make sure all that stuff's together. Make sure that's all latched and complete. That keeps your handle from sliding out and releasing your camper off the back of your fifth wheel. Very important. Make sure you have that pin in place. That kingpin jaw is locked around your kingpin and make sure to have your safety breakaway switch connected. Don't have this connected, you lose your trailer, your trailer's gonna keep rolling and run into something, hurt somebody, you or somebody else. The process is to hook up your trailer connection. Make sure it is secure, like mine is. We got the little lock on the back side of it that holds it in place. One other key thing, once you are hooked up, make sure you lift your tailgate and put it back in the closed position. Because if not, first turn you make, you're going to tear the tailgate off your truck, put a nice big hole in the front of your camper. We are hooked to the camper. We're going to go ahead and take the weight off of the legs on the camper, put all the weight on the truck. You guys see the truck, it'll start squatting here in a second. There she goes. Oh, 
And one key thing to remember when lifting your legs back off the ground, you do not need to run these all the way up till they make noise. That's a good way to burn the gearbox out in there. You really just want to make sure they are up off of your blocks of wood or whatever you may use to um, the little plastic blocks or what have you. I use wood because that's what I have and there's no need in spending $30 or $40 on the other ones. Eh, a couple dollars on some scrap wood. Another key thing to remember, like Miss Jill's doing over here, remember to pull your pin, slide your legs in the up position. Pull that up one more, Jill. Okay. Oh, that's the leg that we had to replace, so it doesn't go as high as our other one. But you want to make sure that those legs are lifted back up and make sure you put the locking pin, which that's this here. Make sure this locking pin is back through. That way it keeps your leg from falling down and dragging the ground, breaking it off, and ripping the whole nose off underneath the front of your camper. What you need to do after you're hooked up, turn your, all your lights on, turn your flashers on, then do your light check. Have lights running on the side of the camper. Both brake lights and flashers are working back here. Let you know a little secret. More often than not, if your flashers are working, you've got brake lights. But it's always good to test the theory. And see now the flashers are off. Miss Jill's applying the brake. We do have good working, functioning stop lights. It's always good to make sure that you've got your running lights working as well. So leave your headlights on when you do this process. Well, we're off to the new campground. So we take a little leisure ride on the little two lane. Sure it was a pretty day, just wish it wasn't so hot. That's the sucky part about it. But I'll take the heat over the freezing cold any day. That's why they made it central air conditioning. <laughs> We're arriving at the new campground. Hmm. Long way back off the road here, but looks like it might be a nice place. We'll see. See this campground really should have thought this out. You see they got all these trees. They are not trimmed out for people to come in with big rigs. And that might take some points away from my liking. So we're at this little hidden campground outside of New Albany, Ohio called Tree Haven. They got some trees. I don't know why they're called Tree Haven. But uh, quite a little campground. Uh, a lot of people who are here are seasonal. So not a lot of weekend campers, and they do monthlies and stuff like that. Don't know what their monthly prices are, but not a bad little campground. Pretty quiet. But, you know, I'd stay here again. Their sites are all mostly gravel, but... So it rains real hard, you know, you got the mud contend with, but I mean, they haven't had any problems with getting stuck or anything like that. And like I said, they do have gravel in their sites and the roads are gravel in. They do have a swimming pool and a store here on site. So, and there's a lot of golf cart traffic in here. I think that's some sort of uh, like shelter house area or something like that. I'm not quite sure, but uh, we'll be up here at the pool here in a second. So there's the pool. Not a super huge pool, but uh, still a nice pool all of them nonetheless. No, I'm following my nose. I'm following the smell of barbecue. Because <laughs> that always sounds good. Now that is what I call a serious smoker. He ain't messing around here, is he? Guys, so I have seeked out the barbecue man. Like I said, I smelled it clear across the campground. Now I'm over here 
we found him. We're going to talk to this gentleman here, and we're going to see what the process is and what he's got going on in here smoking today. Because I'm telling you right now, standing right here, if you smell a vision, y'all dare him should be hungry. I'll tell you that right now. Lordy, lordy, lordy. If I don't make you guys hungry, I don't know what will. Because I'll tell you right now, that smells good. That looks real good. This is Jeff, and Jeff's the owner of this little business here, and we're going to talk to him a little bit more about what he does and all these smoked meats he takes care of. So what kind of things can they find on your menu, Jeff? I do uh, pulled pork, brisket, whole chickens, spare ribs, baby back ribs, beef ribs. And uh, I cook my smoked baked beans in here. My green beans are cooked in here. Cornbread, coleslaw, potato salad, corn on the cob, smoked in the smoker. Hmm, good. Man, that's making me hungry just thinking about it. So, uh, also, you were telling me you were going to be opening a brick and mortar restaurant here. Yeah, I'm looking uh, in Westerville, Ohio, right by Hoover Reservoir on Gorsuch Road next to the Chalet Pizza. In another location in downtown Delaware here within the next couple of months. Awesome, awesome. So, uh, what was the name of your uh, business again? Whole Hog Barbecue Catering. Mm -hmm. And you got a phone number or website? Yep, 614-848-4HOG. 848-4464, wholehogbbq.net. So you see a little bit about what Jeff does here, and you've seen all that good-looking meat inside that smoker looking good and all the stuff he's got on his menu items. If you guys are in this area, look him up. Uh, I think you also do catering too, right? Yes, I do. So what other better way to have a big holiday function at a campground, especially if you end up at this campground, uh, get a hold of the meat man. We'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching.